I've saved my progress is fakeypaint.psd, so-called because the war paint so far is very fakey. It should look like this. So it should integrate into the skin and the shadows and just look absolutely magical and at peace with this peaceful creature. So that's what we're going to do inside this exercise. We're going to blend. And we're going to blend the war paint in a couple of different ways. First of all, we're going to take advantage of luminance blending, which we've seen before, but we're going to see again. And secondly, we're going to take advantage of a bevel and emboss layer effect. So for starters, I'm going to go ahead and click on the cyan paint layer to make sure it's active. Then I'll go to the layer panel menu and I'll choose blending options. Control Shift O on the PC, Command Shift O on the Mac. Brings up the blending options dialog box and I am going to once again force through the underlying layer. Where this project is concerned, we haven't seen a lot of this layer action, which allows you to drop away pixels based on the luminance level of those pixels inside the active layer. Problem is, the reason that this layer isn't going to do us any good, where, for example, the pupil was concerned or this war paint is concerned, is because the luminance of this layer is consistent. It doesn't wander the way everything else does in the background. So the real luminance in this image is being conveyed by the underlying layers. That's why we need to use this slider. I could expose some of the highlights like so. That doesn't really do us any good. That doesn't look right to me. So I'm going to put that white triangle back where it was. And instead, I'm going to expose the shadows by dragging the black slider triangle over to the right. Now, of course, like usual, we have these jagged transitions. That's terrible. And besides, we want more of a sloping drop off associated with these war paint strokes as if they were applied with a fingertip. So I'm going to press the Alt or the Option key, and I'm going to drag the right half of this black slider triangle away. And I'm going to take it all the way up to 165 right there. And now we get this nice sloping drop off and it really does give it a nice organic feel and you can see the skin texture show through and it's as if the war paint and the texture are interacting with each other. So perfect. I'll go ahead and click OK to accept that modification. I'm not going to change the blend mode, incidentally. We don't need that. Just click OK. And the other thing I want to do is add a little bit of depth to the war paint so it appears to sort of rise from the flesh just ever so slightly. And we're going to do that using a bevel and emboss effect. So I'll drop down to the FX icon and I'll choose bevel and emboss. And that's way too much beveling, as you can see there. I'm happy with the angle and the altitude values. So that's a function of my global light setting, which is turned on. So I'm not going to change those. You can experiment with them if you want to, but don't leave use global light turned on if you're going to do that because you'll mess up the yellow paint layer. However, I do definitely want to take the size value down because I don't want this much depth going on here because it looks silly. And also, I don't want the technique to be smooth. I'd rather the technique was chisel soft. Now, I'll start by selecting that. At first, that's not going to look right. Of course, the war paint isn't going to be chiseled onto somebody's face. That doesn't even make sense. However, once we reduce the size value, it's going to start looking right. So the lowest you can go with the size value, if you want to actually see the darn thing, is 1 one pixel. And then I'm going to take the soften value to smooth away some of that chiseling. I'm going to take it up to five pixels. And you'll end up seeing this effect right there, which isn't sufficient, but it will be better once we start fooling around with the blend modes here. I'm going to change the blend mode for the highlights to linear dodge, like so. And that ends up making those highlights just leap off the image. That, of course, is way too much. So I'm going to take the opacity value down to 30%. And then we don't need much in the way of shading. So I'm going to leave the shadow mode set to multiply. And I'm going to take the opacity value down to 30% right there. And then I'm going to reduce the depth to 40%, like so. And that's it. That's just exactly the degree of bevel and emboss I want. No less, no more. That's great. Click OK in order to accept that effect. Now, you might look at this and you might say, well, that's still an awfully thick edge. So it looks pretty gooey. Watch what happens when we zoom in. I'm going to press Control-1 or Command-1 on the Mac to zoom all the way into 100%. And you can see that actually we have some very thin edges. The problem is, as you zoom out, Photoshop is continually trying to render it out as a single pixel. So a single pixel thick, even when you're zoomed out to 50% which is too darn thick. Now, it'd be nice if it didn't do that. That's what it does do. 
The good news is it'll print just fine. It'll print like this so that we have a very thin edge. It'll also output to the web like this. It'll flatten like this. If we were to flatten the image, it would look better. In fact, let's do that. I'll go ahead and zoom out. Control minus a couple of times. Actually, let's go farther out so we've got the image centered. And notice how thick the edges are right now. I'm going to go up to the layer menu and I'm going to choose flatten image, or I could press my keyboard shortcut that I give you with D keys. Control Shift Alt F, Command Shift Option F on a Mac. Yes, I want to discard the hidden layers. And notice, did you see that? The layer effect just got skinnier. So this was before, and we've got these chunky layer effects going on. And this is after. I get done flattening out the image. And the flat version of the image shows you what it really looks like when you print it or export it to the web or obviously flatten it out and save it as a JPEG for a client or something along those lines. So just know that Photoshop's preview when you're zoomed out from a layer effect is not necessarily exactly accurate. All right, so I'm going to undo the flattening of the image because I don't want to lose my layers for now. That's the cyan war paint blended in with the underlying image. In the next exercise, we will create and blend the layer of white war paint.